Hey, uh, we're mixing this up a little bit. I went into Wattstones. Sorry about this scrubbiness. I was doing some ink work the other day. Well, the other day, yesterday. Um, anyway, so I went into Wattstones and had a look at their moleskins. Now, obviously, it'd, it'd be quite expensive to get a full sketchbook moleskin. Um, just give me a second like this one Let me zoom out it'd be quite expensive to get this because i think this cost me uh 13 pounds or something ridiculous um it would be quite expensive to buy these and do some artwork on them because i've seen a couple of people kind of do a bit of um, hand painting on sketchbooks and so i kind of wanted to have a little set for myself and so instead of getting expensive ones like this that are for sketching, I found some blank plain, uh, some plain journals and just thought this would be quite a cool little idea. Um, get this, it was only 5 dollars so obviously that's about half the price, less than half the price of that one. They are thinner, there's three in a pack and they're kind of spring colours which I liked so I thought that would um, be quite nice for spring. Uh, yeah, so let's open these up. Um, obviously they're not sketchbooks, so they don't have sketchbook paper, but let's see what the covers are like. So let's take this off. This is what I love about moleskins. They're um, moleskiners, moleskines? I don't know how you want to say it, moleskins. Um, I love how they always include like a ruler sort of thing. This one includes a ruler. My um, sketchbook came, because obviously it's for sketching, it came with um, like a makeshift protractor kind of sheet, uh, which I think is pretty cool. So I should keep that in that little pocket that um, most skins always add. So yeah, um, nice ruler that they've added, that's pretty cool. Um, sketchbooks themselves, yeah look at those colours, they're so pretty. Um, yeah like I say, they're quite thin, um, oh they always have that nice pocket in the background, in the background, the back page which is nice. I think these pages you can rip out or is that where the st stitching was supposed to be? Oh no you can, you can rip these pages out if you've done something in them and you don't want the whatever it is you've done. Um, which is quite nice. I didn't, oh, here we go. Uh, this is just a little bit about moleskin. Um, I did notice on one of these, which I only noticed after I bought it, yeah, that purple one, can you see how the stitching's not properly on the spine? Which, I, like I said, I didn't notice until I'd actually got them uh, back to my apartment and I had a look at them, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, I just thought it'd be quite nice do a nice little painting, a little series or something, um, linking all these books together. I don't know, I thought it would be quite cool anyway. I just thought I'd film the process. The front is quite a nice thick card, so it would hold some paint on there. And the pages are thin, as you can see, they're, they're pretty thin. But if your only intention was to sketch or use them for the purpose as a journal, then perfectly fine and I think that is a really nifty idea being able to pull them out uh, of the book itself so I think that's pretty cool yeah you can tell I'm really cold look how red and blotchy my arms are that's kind of weird anyway yeah so do these three books I'm going to be using some of the stuff I got from my latest scroll box the paintbrushes the paints. Um, I also thought I would bring out this yeast, <laughs> which is my um, which is my art painting box. You obviously can't get a good view because you are quite close. Um, but in a nutshell, it has paints, paints more paints and even more paints under there um, all acrylic uh, and gouache paints so 
yeah I'll be able to create something cool with all of this and I haven't done an acrylic painting in a while a proper one obviously I did that one for the scroller box but I haven't done an acrylic painting in a while that you know I just thought I could sit down and enjoy and um, yeah so I thought I'd film it all for you and see what you think so um, yeah that's basically what I was going to be doing so um, I'll have a little think see what I want to put on here maybe as a series maybe individual um, and show you my processes and everything so yeah uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the other side Okay, so this was a really good exercise. I used predominantly my Windsor Newton Galleria acrylics, which were my mum's, and also some De La Roni System 3 acrylics. The reason I mixed two different acrylics together was because my Galleria, I used to have a lot of colours um, that my mum had bought for herself, and they, a couple of them dried up. I either ran out of them, they dried up, or, do you know, do you know the, uh, the metal... I think alumin aluminium uh, what do you call them tubes that they come in sometimes when they when they've been used a lot they they become very hard and stiff and so they crack in areas especially when you're trying to get the paint out and you're folding it over or something like that the tubes actually crack and therefore do you know those little hairline cracks can actually allow the air to get in and then dry your acrylics up so I've never really been a fan of them and I did recent well not recently probably like early last year um buy some more Galleria Windsor Newton acrylics just to replace a few colors that had dried up and they've now made them in plastic tubes yeah they don't look as neat and cool and arty as the um the aluminium tubes look but I just think that you're gonna your paint's not going to dry out, it's going to last a lot longer and you know it's just going to be good which I, I'm, gl I'm glad of really um, but I probably won't be replacing the paints that often because I don't really use them very often and I think the end, at the end of the day I, I really struggle to get back into the acrylics because I haven't used them in so long, I used to use them all the time, especially when I was doing my art GCSE, I used to use them for every single project, and my art teacher used to tell me, I need to use something different, that's how much I was obsessed with my acrylics, and yeah, I think actually, the way I was using them would have served me better if I was using oils the way I really wanted to work with them, so maybe trying oils will be a, a venture I'll, I'll try, maybe after my degree's over in a, in a couple of months. Um, but yeah this it did take me a little while to get into them especially with this crocus being the first one I uh, you'll see that I chose spring flowers that kind of had the same colors as a corresponding book cover so I used a purple crocus for the purple book cover uh, sp uh, cherry blossoms as pink for the pink pink uh, cover and I used, I didn't want a yellow flower, I, so I chose um, daisies, but the orange, yellowy orange centre corresponds obviously to the yellow one. Um, but yes, this crocus took me a little while for blending, because I had, luckily I have a violet in the paints themselves, and it was a nice violet, but I obviously had to mix a couple more, and I had a very wide uh, options for mixing colours, you know, having Windsor Blue and uh, Cadmium Red, you know, things like that. I think I, I wish I had Alizarin Crimson in the red aspect of things because that would have made a really, really beautiful uh, colour. And anyway, to not waffle on about this one, I wish I'd kind of created a more of a transparent look to the petals. I think that would have been much more appealing. Um, anyway, moving on to the Daisy, Daisy, Daisy. This was kind of challenging because the way I picked, because I all these are from reference photos, which I'll link in the description below. But this Daisy was very difficult because I found that the the way I'd placed them on the book was a bit awkward, and in the picture I was looking at, they kind of 
there were a few more around it that's why the 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 uh, stems of the flower were kind of in that positioning and it makes sense with more around it but I didn't want to have a full book of flowers like I wanted it to look like the crocus and the spring blossom where this the cherry blossom where it's only kind of half filling the paper the booklet because do you know what I mean it's not supposed to fill the whole thing so that's why the stems look a little bit awkward but do you know I got over it in the end um but yeah the getting the petals also to look like they're on top of each other is quite challenging especially with the acrylic because I like to work thick I don't like to dry brush and watering down I use often as well but uh, because of the colour of the book being not white it was kind of difficult I had to use a very thick paint to create the colour otherwise it would be pretty uh, you know you'd have that kind of purple tint to it with this purple book so it was kind of challenging to try and get the everything to blend um i apologize for everything things being off this the um camera i was zoomed in quite a little uh, quite a lot because of my setup so that's why um yeah so uh yeah it, it was it was challenging but i enjoyed it um this has to be not my favorite anyway but yeah, uh, I'll let you watch until it goes on to the cherry blossom where I have more things to say. Another thing I will say is that the the centres of these flowers was also very difficult because there is a lot of fine detail in there but I didn't want to paint all of that detail so it was kind of a lot of stippling with the paint to kind of get the impression of that detail in there.
Okay, so onto the cherry blossoms. I think I enjoy this one the most. I just worked, you know, petal by petal using my my crimson and I can't remember what my other red was actually. But I used my two reds that I think were both the Windsor and Newton paints along with, you know, my whites and everything to create very 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 light pinks and you just I just darken those with a little bit more red and um, yeah it, it turned out really really nice I liked the composition of this one which I think is pretty nice <laughs> if I do say so myself and not that I I create this composition it was kind of a stock photo but I mean like I feel like it really really fit well on this piece of paper which I enjoyed um, and yeah, it was, it was it was really nice to do, really relaxing. I think I think I enjoyed this the most, even though it was the last one I did. I I usually look, run out of steam towards the end of something, and you know it never really turns out as well. But it, I don't know what was happening, but this this ended up turning out way nicer. Here, where I'm adding this little darker red for the um, areas, it actually wasn't the correct red, but I went with it anyway just because I I could have you know I just it helped layer it up but in hindsight I'm not working with watercolours I'm not working with something that needs layering up because the paint itself is just going to get covered by the next colour I put on anyway so but you know it's good practice to learn to layer so I just I, I layered it up and left it that way but um yeah petal by petal but uh, working as a whole so if I'm doing one layer of colour so the lightest colour you know I do all of the petals and then work on it like that but the I will say this yellow was probably the easiest I mean the hardest to cover up because you'd think the darker colors were but because I was adding such a light color like pink it was really really difficult because even the white was easier because that was just a solid color I got out straight out of the tube and I just applied this I was mixing and so the 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 opacity of the colour was less so because of the amount of mixing I was doing. Well, that skipped a lot. My camera sometimes does this, it doesn't tell me when it stopped recording, <laughs> but it'll stay on so it looks like it's recording. Anyway, yeah, so, and again, the trunk was done with some burnt sienna um, and burnt umber just mixed in there. And yeah, the, um, the stems were quite fun to do because I wasn't getting the fine detail I wanted from the paintbrush and the white but it really helped to once I've highlighted where I want everything to use my black and for some reason the black must have been a bit more watered down because it was allowing me to apply it a little thinner and that created kind of like do you know the 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 shadow to each little stem of those pollen areas um, and it it worked out really well and I think that's what brought together the whole thing because as it was now without any pollen stems on there it kind of just looked very flat and then those pollen stems really made it pop like it had depth to it because they were all in different directions some of them are coming towards you so it looks very stumpy some of them are very long so it looks very you know like they're folding away from you so it, they really really worked nicely and just applying a little blob of a yellow an orange and a, a deep orange um, kind of on each of those and a little bit of black just to shadow them just really brought it all together and um, I really enjoyed it so yeah it was nice
Okay, so as you can see, I have finished all three sketchbooks. Um, yeah, as you probably just saw at the end there was a bit of an issue with this one where I was rubbing out some of the pencil and I smudged the um, orange, so I just made those into some more uh, little pollen stems there. And the same happened with this one. I tried covering it up with my purple, so instead I just put my signature over it. Um, I enjoyed it as you can see I'm, I'm done kind of like a spring theme spring for flowers um, a blossom some daisies quite large daisies um, and a crocus and yeah I really enjoyed them now this one is probably my least favorite the daisies um, when I'd finished this one I thought it would be my favorite but in the end this one ended up being my favorite and to be honest and I will admit it I was losing kind of like my passion for doing these when I was doing this one and in the end it turned out to be the best one so maybe I was putting a bit too much thought into these and tried to blend a bit too much and another thing is like I said I haven't done um, acrylics in a long time and to be honest they've, it's quite difficult to get back into really with blending and things like that um, but I still love them, still really enjoy them, and yeah, I just think they were quite good. So um, I hope you enjoy this. As you can see as well, I kind of chose themes, so there's a pink flower to go with the pink book, but obviously on a different one, purple to go with the purple, and then I, couldn't, I didn't want a yellow flower like this, but there's yellow in the centre, which, you know, obviously corresponds to that one. So yeah, that's what it is. I'll give you a bit of a close-up. So that's the crocus there. Uh, as another thing is, it's kind of really difficult to not get the books. Sorry, the camera uh, overheated there. Um, like I, like I was saying, it's really difficult to not get your books dirty. Like I was rubbing out pencil because I don't know whether when I was drawing there was pencil on my desk or what, and then obviously the paint was a big issue. Like which happened to these two but yeah they there's like a water splodge went on here which ate through the paper a little bit so do you know it's really really difficult I think you'd be really you'd have to be cleaning your hands and cleaning the desk and everything constantly to make sure these were um, kept really really pristine but yeah anyway so that's the crocus and um, that's the daisies And then lastly, the blossom. So yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and uh, tell me if you want me to go and get some more books and do like another different theme or something like that because they do have different colours. I don't know. So give me a little um, thumbs up and a comment if that's what you want me to do. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Um, so I sketched off camera just because um, I was ill and I just wanted to plan it out and um, I drew, the, you'll see a little point in the centre which I drew from lots of perspective lines that's why the building and the satellite is at very different angles and you can see that they are the closest thing